Greetings from Los Angeles, excellencies and friends. My deep gratitude to Women's Federation for World Peace and their partners for all you do for families around the world and for being so welcoming of me as a husband, father of two girls, and recently a grandfather of a beautiful little boy. The experience of becoming a grandfather, seeing my little girl as a mom, is truly a wonder of continuity, of standing at the intersection of the past, present, and future in a very different way than as a parent. I have to admit, though, that for all the wonderful emotions rushing back with memories of changing baby diapers and having that familiar soggy spot on my shoulder from baby drool, I also feel a sad awareness that too many men never make it through the ups and downs of marriage to reach this place of amplified joy. I've been invigorated to work even harder to reach more men with the message of Father Khan, that what we are so often told will make us happy doesn't hold a candle to loving and being loved as a father. My organization, FatherCon, was born out of eight years of working on the prevention of human trafficking and recognizing that in too many survivor stories and the testimonies of those who use their freedom to deprive others of theirs, there was a father missing or causing hurt in some other way. I began to realize that when fathers get it right, so many other things fall into place. Wives and children are healthier and stronger. When a father is engaged with his kids, playing with them and allowing them to step out on walls and jump from trees, the world becomes a little less scary and threatening, and people are not all dangerous. This may seem a strange thing to say for someone who's worked for 12 years on the prevention of human trafficking and who has heard horror stories of dangers to children that I wish I didn't know. But it is important. We are designed as human beings to live in a very different world than what we are in now. Threats to children have only increased and become more deadly and destructive with the easy access to children provided by the internet, social media, and AI. But for all the reasons we have to be afraid, fear will not protect our children from the monsters, not under our beds or in shadows, but hunting for them with promises of love and money and delivering only a damaged identity and hopeless resignation of abuse and being used. The antidote is a stronger identity and confidence of being loved. When a father tells his daughter daily she's beautiful and loved, the hollow proclamations of a predator lose their force. When a child grows up trusting in the presence of a father, that child has more empathy, a greater sense of being worthy of love, and appreciates education and resists harmful behavior. To achieve such homes, we need to inspire fathers, provide support to heal and maintain a priority on the family and children, and change our measure in society of success from material stuff and status to championing the heart of men as parents, the heart of the father or father figure. Harvard has conducted the longest study ever of human happiness and health, spanning 85 years of interviews, DNA sampling, and life achievements. Their conclusion? That human happiness is the result of long-lasting relationships, of family and friends that endure. Viktor Frankl said, Happiness cannot be pursued, but must ensue. It is the fruit of how we live, not the fruit to be stolen and enjoyed alone, and then leaves us wanting more and more and more. We, therefore, must not be overwhelmed by the threats our children face, but provide the antidote. Jack Reynolds spent 12 years in prison for molesting 300 children, and upon his release, he was asked what kind of children he targeted. He replied that it was not the type of child so much, but if I thought the father was a threat, I wouldn't approach the child. I once was speaking with a survivor of years of being trafficked, with all the horror of that experience, and I asked her about her childhood and how she came to be trafficked. I asked, what would have made it the difference for you? What, what did you want as a child? She answered without hesitation that she wanted to see her father love her mother. Sometimes it's not in the dramatic acts that we provide the greatest protection for our kids. Of course, we need to understand the threats, the tactics used, the red flags that disclose methods used by predators who sneak into our homes through digital screens, 
so that our, our sons and our daughters can see through their lies. We need to become wise in how to deal with children being exposed to violent, humiliating, and racist pornography, which hijacks the natural curiosity of children and provides them scripts they come to believe they must follow to find the bliss promised in unrealistic videos. We need to understand, yes, but not lose sight of what makes sense to a child, of what makes the world make sense. FatherCon provides such a balance of what parents need to know about the world their children are growing up in and the inspiration for men to rise to the challenge of trustworthiness their children need. Much is being done and successes are happening with legislation, law enforcement, and social programs providing wraparound services. Age verification for access to adult porn and guarantees of consensual content, content have been legislated in eight states in the U.S., and more countries and states are looking to pass laws that will cripple the reach of an industry that fuels exploitation. But the real battle is to be won in the home, in our families, in the support and resources provided that keep fathers present and finding their success and joy as parents. At FatherCon, our vision and work is to see loving, engaged fathers at the core of every family unit and support for all those serving in the role of father figures and to see more fathers reach grandfatherhood. Thank you very much for your kind attention.